Okay, hello, hello, and welcome to the Rock Metal Podcast. I am your host, John Harris. Today on Rock Metal Podcast, we have Emmetropia. That's why I say it, right? Emmetropia? Yeah, that's that's correct. Okay, beautiful. They have a new album called Equinox, which is going to be released in 2022. Right now, I'm being joined by, oh my goodness gracious, I should have listened ahead of time. Is it Ollie or All? Uh, Ollie, I guess, is the closest you can do in English. Okay, because I need an that's I. That's what we usually go with. Yeah, I need an I in there. I almost typed out an I, Ollie, you know? <laughs> Uh, yeah. Okay. Ollie and Lisa. Lisa's easy to do. You know, you should do like Lisa. Get a really good, you know, name. Uh, cool. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll tell my parents <laughs> 25 years ago. Yeah, thank you. Uh, sweet. And they're going to share some more information about this stellar release as well as a couple of tracks uh, that they've got with links, YouTube links. I'm going to have those posted. So, gang, welcome to the show. Thank, thank you. you. Absolutely great to have you on. In fact, I just watched your latest music video, Seasonal Warfare Reimagined. I was watching it last night. Just came out, what, a couple of days ago? Yeah, last week. Last week, baby. And then originally I had found out about That Fateful Night, so I watched that. I believe it's a lyric video, if I remember correctly. Yes. Sweet. Okay. Now, there seems to be some things to do with seasons. We've got Seasonal Warfare. We have Equinox. Take us through this album, Equinox. Is is it a concept album? Um, yes, it uh, it's very much is. Um, I'm the one who writes all the lyrics, and so I pretty much decide <laughs> what <laughs> the albums are supposed to be about. And uh, I don't like just doing random songs. Like, this song is about that, this one is about something completely different. So, yeah, it's uh, concept albums with me all the way. Okay. Now, what is the concept? Can you take us through the story? Like, is it a, a hard story from beginning to end with an arc and a protagonist and an antagonist? Uh, kind of. Uh, it's kind of like two stories, I guess you could say. It's uh, in part about these kings who rules, uh, like, decides which season it will be. Uh, and they have this never-ending fight, um, not knowing that this is a never-ending fight. Um, so it's just this ongoing thing, this cycle of suffering and happiness, pretty much. And then there's also this little boy who has heard this story, and he's this small, naive child, and he thinks that, why can't they just be friends? Everything will be fine then. So he seeks out the ruling king, which is the king of summer, the fey king, and he's going to try to convince them to make peace. Okay. Does it work, or would that spoil the story? It's going to spoil the story a little. It's going to spoil <laughs> the story. All right, so everybody who's tuning in right now on Twitch, I just posted in the chat, emetropiaband.com, where you can go ahead and check out everything that the band has got going on, and then obviously in today's show notes for the YouTube video, when this is released later, We'll have emetropiaband.com as well as uh, a couple of videos that are available. Now, never-ending fights, cycle of suffering and happiness, small, naive children who think, why? But Papa, why can't the world just make sense? And as a father of two children, I can tell you that I have had to answer this question. Children look at the world and go, well, why doesn't it make sense? How come that politician just lied and he's not being held accountable. I don't have an answer. It, it's it's crazy, right? So is this kind of loosely somewhat sort of based on reality? Um, not really. Uh, I mean, not intentional at least, but when, when you think about it, it does make sense. Definitely. Yeah. So life is just so good um, in Sweden that, you know... <laughs> <laughs> Everything is perfect here. Oh yeah, no, I, I, I guess that uh, you could definitely make, make that connection, right? Um, for, for sure. Uh, there's actually a bit of a funny story of how the concept came to be, though. Uh, the the thing with the seasons and stuff, because of course you, Lisa, you came in um, uh, when we when we kind of started. We had written a couple of songs and stuff like that, and our previous vocalist. He wrote the lyrics for one of the songs, Lord of the Blizzards. Um, and that's basically about a guy who thinks it's too warm, right? Because he wrote it during the summer when he really wanted an AC installed in his room because it was so hot that he couldn't sleep. 
Um, and that kind of inspired the entire story uh, by proxy. <laughs> so so, so the, I, I think that's a bit fun. Uh, that we, we went from this this guy who just he couldn't sleep and now we have this big epic story that you could oh, obviously connect to naive children's of the world and stuff like that <laughs> all those naive children yeah <laughs> that's right okay now for everybody watching it on twitch right now thank you so much for uh you know your patience and whatnot for whatever reason uh, the the window in Skype inside of Twitch will often resize. So right now, Ollie, you're like you're really small, but it will automatically resize <laughs> eventually to norm to normal size. And then when Lisa talks, it'll go over to her. I got to try and figure this out because it's really annoying. Because I'll like I'll spend the entire interview like chasing this window and resizing it. But <laughs> the good news is that our content is so great. Otherwise, the interview is so <laughs> enthralling that people are like. Pfft, who cares if Ollie's this big? In real life, he's huge. He's a giant. Mm -hmm. Screw the visuals, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, my camera is so dark anyway, you can barely see me. <laughs> might, might as well just put me to the side somewhere. <laughs> Beautiful, baby. Okay, so that fateful night, what happened on that fateful night? Take us through this track. Do you want to or should I, Ole? Nah, I, I guess I can go, go with it. Uh, and we'll see if you agree. You wrote the lyrics after all. Uh, no, but the, basically the, uh, that fateful night introduces the boy into the story. Um, by, by that point in the album, we'll, we've kind of set up the conflict in general and told people a bit about the world. Uh, but this is where, where the, the small child uh, comes into the picture because um, it tells the tale of the fateful night when he went out into the woods and somehow found himself in the world of these two fighting kings. And he realized that, okay, this is a real thing, and I want to stop them from fighting. Right. Right, Lisa? Or am, am I completely full of bullshit? Well, the <laughs> chat right now agrees that you're a giant, so I don't think that you could be uh, <laughs> full of what it was that you just said. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good to me. <laughs> it, do it does sound good. All right. Yeah, that's right, Theodore. That's right, Beach Six. <laughs> that's right. He is a giant. Sweet. So that's what started the whole thing. Did it also start the, the whole thing musically? Like, at what point did you guys know you had the album locked in musically? I know lyrically Lisa had chatted about that she had you know, ulterior motives and an agenda and things in mind with, with her lyrics. But at what point musically did you guys know, okay, this is it. We got the guitar. We're ready to go. <laughs> I, I think it just kind of, uh, kind of happened. I mean, th this is, uh, these songs, we started writing them as the band was sort of forming. Um, so, so it kind of grew into it what it is today uh, it, it wasn't like we, we sat down and decided that okay we run, want to write an epic uh, epic concept album uh, but we, we did a couple of songs and then of course lisa you came in and you liked the the concept writing bigger concepts uh, as you said um and i think that's kind of spawned the idea that okay but sure maybe we can connect these songs try to make something coherent about uh, about it um, and uh, yeah, it, it basically just grew from there. Because um, I think w by the time you joined Lisa, that was in 2017, right? Yeah. Uh, I think so, yeah. yeah um, we had written maybe the four or five songs, something like that. Some were more finished than others, um, but we only had lyrics for one of them. Um, so yeah, we ju we just kind of kind of went with it and said, okay, maybe we can connect these. And then after that, we of course pr proceeded with what what's missing in this story. If we need to make it a full story, uh, okay, we need to write a song that feels more like uh, maybe it's more angry or more upbeat and happy, uh, and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I want to point out that everybody. <laughs> Sorry, carry on. Yeah. Uh, Liam would send us uh, the songs that he had written, and I would listen to it and almost immediately know, okay, this song is about this chapter in the story, pretty much. Okay. And I would watch from that. Yeah, cool. As soon as I mentioned keytars, though, the chat blew up. So we got to talk about keytars. <laughs> So, oh, wait, you're a person then? Yeah. So the al yeah, the only important thing about the album, honestly, is just that there's a keytar in the music video. So let's chat about that that keytar. 
<laughs> you want to talk talk about the keto? That, that's been a controversial topic for years. So I, I want to let you know. <laughs> um, Why? I, I specifically uh, have always <laughs> thought that key charts are quite, uh, I don't know, silly, I guess, um, cheesy and stuff like that. Uh, uh, and, nope. and, Nobody and agrees I, with I, you, Ollie. Quite- Nobody. No, nobody agrees. I uh, disagree. <laughs> um, but but I know some someday because Liam had had these huge like he had d- double keyboards on this huge stand, so nobody could fit on stage. I mean, we were six people, and then we had to bring all this equipment, uh, and, and we just couldn't move anymore. And I guess he was tired of that, and also he was tired of standing still during the live shows. Uh, and then he found this key chart, right, the one in the video, uh, and it, it looks. Like it's the first key chart I've seen that looks very metal. Like it's 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 actually cool to look at. It doesn't just look, I don't know, silly. Um, so so he uh, he got my approval in the end, and uh, I, I assume from the other band members as well. Uh, and now he plays the key chart, and that's the story, I guess. <laughs> There's so much more to that story. I mean, let's talk about why you don't like key tars. What is, what is it about the keytar that you don't... I, so, let me preface this by saying that I am 36 years old, so when I grew up as a young boy, as a naive child, and I was looking at the world of Van Halen and limousines with hot tubs in the back, okay? Just 80s decadence. The keytar was there, everywhere. I, it, I think that's, that's the point, right? You have that. That's kind of the epitome of uh, super cheese, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, like eighties style. It's uh, kind of cheesy and goofy, but also yeah. a little fun. Yeah, exactly. But then again, but this time, I mean, it was a couple of years ago. Uh, I was still young then. I have grown since. I realized the uh, the potential yeah. and the the I guess cool coolness factor of it. Uh, at least with the the model that Liam is using, uh, which I can admit that it it looks it looks nice. It's it's a nice image. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay, that brings up another good question then, and this is totally off topic. But you guys seem like you're you know fun people, except for Ollie. He doesn't seem very yeah. fun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm, uh, dull, you're super dull. That's why you sit in the dark mm. and yeah, play lead guitar. Everybody knows that. Uh, so, <laughs> '80s cheese. I love 80s cheese. I'd go back any day to the 80s cheese. Uh, from your guys' perspective, though, you said it's cheesy. Is it like a bad kind of cheese? Like dad joke cheese? Yeah, I guess it's kind of a good kind of cheese. Okay, good cheese from Lisa. I like That's Lisa. <laughs> I mean, there are different kinds of cheese, right? It's the, it's the cheese that makes you kind of want to throw up. You oh. know, that, that kind that it gets stuck in your throat and like... Uh, I just want, want it out, out of my system and I will feel bad for a couple of days. That's not all of it. There are some more sophisticated cheeses mm-hmm. uh, that, that are uh, a bit a bit more for, for, for the, uh, yeah, I guess for the sophisticated listener. Yes. Um, you have. Theodore is a, is a sophisticated listener. Theodore says all cheese is good cheese. And I agree with Theodore. Um <coughs> Take us through. Yeah, are there band members who love cheese? I I don't get that Ollie likes cheese. He likes sophisticated cheese. So what kind of what what's a good Swedish cheese? Take us through that. Are there any specific Swedish cheeses that maybe I've never uh, heard of? Yeah, it, um, I I I like the pro- the the progressive stuff. You know, uh, the, the progressive cheese. The, yeah, progressive cheese for sure. Uh, <laughs> uh, the, maybe even. The cheesy progressive stuff, you know, the uh, the thing that wants to be progressive just to be complicated, that kind of cheese. That kind of cheese. The, the dream theater at its uh, peak, uh, the silliest Devin Townsend you can hear. Mm-hmm. Those kinds of cheeses, you know, that that's my uh, my, my my kind of snack. Yeah, uh, are, you, are you more like? Are you feeling, <laughs> Ollie wants to know how you feel about Swedish cheese. Is there a Swedish cheese that, that you like, Lisa, that maybe I've never heard of? What, what would characterize a Swedish cheese? What is it like that maybe I would know? Is it... 
I don't really know about Swedish cheese, but uh, I really enjoy musicals, and that can be considered quite cheesy by some. Okay, I don't know how to say that, but Vesterbotten? Uh, oh, the, the, the Vesterbotten. Okay. Yeah. It's good with cheese. And yeah, that, that's, that's a nice one. Music, not that cool cheese. Who, who, shall, who shall sauce? I have no idea what you just said. Who sh- <laughs> okay, so what's the A with the O on it? Oh, that's an O sound, right? Yeah, hoosh or sauced. Hoosh or sauced. Yeah? Oh, oh, oh. Hoosh or sauced. That's what you're saying. There we yeah, go. It's just the most basic kind of thing that you can. Yeah, very uh, generic. Yeah. Oh. Like uh, for- that's fine. I mean. I, I just for for the record, by the way, I have nothing against people who like a certain kind of cheese, <laughs> uh, figuratively or literally. Uh, you you can have whatever you feel is best for you, um, and and that's that's is that that is okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, even in in the band, we have very di- different tastes tastes mm-hmm. uh, regarding both cheese and cheesy music. I think. Uh, and uh, yeah, that that that's that's fine. Just so everyone know, I I, I don't consider myself an a cheese elitist. Uh, sounds yeah. like you're a cheese elitist. It sounds like there's there's tensions. As soon as I brought up the guitar, which I thought was the coolest part of everything, and then <laughs> I, I'm sorry, it wasn't. What is that? Like an eight string guitar or something that you're using? Or am I making that up? Sorry, it's, how- it's a it's a hand fretted seven string guitar. Oh my goodness gracious! Yeah, we would never get along. Uh, <laughs> but that's why, like, you guys are like on polar sides of the music video. I'm like, oh man, I sh- I want to see like a guitar solo, guitar solo action thing going on. But it sounds like we would have to get some mediation involved for that, like to get you guys to stand next to each other and be that visibly cheesy on stage. Yeah, probably. I think we have one of those uh, a section like that in in one song actually, with a bit kind of like an Iron Maiden style uh, melody uh, harmony thingy, where both the guitarists and the key char uh, goes together and plays in harmony. Uh, I think that, that that's the sort of thing you would be looking for, mm-hmm. really like eighties cheese, mm-hmm. I suppose. Perfect. Now, speaking of some yeah. of that cheese, we see that in the music video, Seasonal Warfare Reimagined. Take us through this track. What what is this <clears throat> seasonal warfare? Is this part of that concept, Lisa, where you're talking about the cycles of suffering and happiness and the never-ending fights? Is this is this where in our story we see this this fight happening? And uh, no, it's not like this is where it's at. It's more like an intro song that kind of like a little bit like a story that the little boy is told ish. Um, you get a general outline of, of the kings and their fight. Um, get to hear about the king that is not ruling at the moment, uh, what he's feeling and thinking, and also a little bit about the boy. So it's a general intro song, you could say. Okay, just a general yeah. intro song. Yeah, I'd say, I'd say it, it's kind of... It just it, it introduces the world and sets up the story, uh, foreshad- foreshadows some things, um, yeah. But just get, gets you into the mood and to get w- what it's all about. Mm-hmm. Somebody just mentioned cheesonal warfare. So is it of s- <laughs> <laughs> that, I, I actually like that. That that that's nice. We 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 can keep that. Is it too late to change the title? Wow. Is We're going to have to have a um, discussion about that one. <laughs> yeah. So speaking of cheese and dad jokes, we just got we just got one. Is the story inspired by Swiss cheese? Does it have a lot of plot holes? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, I think I have tried to keep away from plot holes. Uh, I try to avoid those when I write. But if someone can find one when they hear the album, then... Please do let me know. Mm-hmm. Exactly. What else about the album did you want us to know? We chatted about the concept, the story. We chatted about uh, how Ollie feels about the 80s in general, cheese, um, other band members, notably keyboard players. And what else did we chat about today? Loosely, Lisa joining the band. And that was a, a few years ago, but 
it sounded like that had quite a bit of shape to this album. Is that true? Yeah, I would guess so, since I came in and, you know, I write all the lyrics and so on. So I guess that's a pretty important part of it, how it turned out in the end. Yeah, and and, and also, in, in a way, that when you joined Lisa, uh, that's kind of where we uh, actually started to consider us, ourselves true true symphonic metal i suppose i mean we could do the the entire the cliche with the female fronted uh, symphonic metal band which is a big thing of course um but that that's fun and that was something that was uh, very attractive to us at the time um and so so that def- definitely sets the direction of the band i would say when when you join we kind of okay let's just go with this style then and see where it leads us uh, so so not only was it the lyrical content itself, which of course is a big part, and you wrote the story, and that's where we ended up where we are now with Equinox. Um, but it's also uh, like, yeah, it, it shaped the, the style of music in a uh, in a noticeable way. Mm-hmm. I think you described yourself as symphonic, though, in the ad that I answered. Yeah, I, b- I believe so too. Uh, we we probably wanted to be that, uh, but I mean, it, it was still early days um, in, in, in that time. Um, so I, I, that kind of locked us in on a specific path when you joined. Okay. I was kind of waiting yeah. for Lisa to say some more, but she didn't. <laughs> but don't really have anything to add there. Okay. It's just, oh my God, symphony metal band that I might be able to join. But, <laughs> yeah. Okay. And I did. Yeah. Yeah. Cool stuff. All right. So everybody who is currently listening in on Twitch, we've got emmetropiaband.com, which I have posted into the chat. And if you search up Emmetropia on YouTube, you can check out that Fateful Night and Seasonal Warfare Reimagined, where you can see the band looking just just Swiss cheese cheesy uh, with that mostly just the keytar uh, there. <laughs> Nobody else in the band is looking cheesy. Uh, with their fan, okay. with with their fan I, I, I think it's in, <laughs> inherently cheesy to do a music video uh, like that at all. Like, okay, they put they put us out in the forest and uh, t- told they, us to pretend to play. They, they, the, the the directors of the the music video, uh, and and they just uh, like, okay, go out in the woods and pretend like you're playing guitar. Uh, and uh, I, I think that's. However you do that, it, it will become a certain level of cheesy. Uh, and I embrace that. You guys weren't listening to your audio, like on speakers or anything to play along. You just kind of had this like really quiet moment on grandpa's guitars almost in the in the forest. I had to listen to it while we played, but uh, the drums uh, just were too loud. So. Of course. Yeah. We just listen to the drums and figure out, oh, yeah, this is where we are in the song. So That's why he was crying mascara, because he was like, I'm just too loud. I'm too powerful. <laughs> yeah, poor Oscar. He's always poor like, I'm just so loud. It is too good. <laughs> too good. Nope. Nobody can hear the keytar. <laughs> That's right. Well, Ollie, I hope that, you know, you eventually have fun, because Lisa seems like a very nice person. <laughs> I shall try to enjoy life uh, in, in the future. Just <laughs> as I said, for the ref- as, as as a reference, I I do enjoy what we do. It is cheesy. I like cheese as well. Uh, I think we we do a a good job of combining the the uh, the most cliche power metal tropes with. Uh, some very complex and interesting prog metal passages, uh, and we mash these together with uh, a, a ground of um, of symphonics, uh, I guess a symphony orchestra, and uh, I think that the result is pretty unique, and I, I really enjoy playing that kind of music. It's mm-hmm. great. Yeah, you get a, a bit a bit of both these worlds if you if you want to split them up on a. <laughs> I just imagine you lost beats uh, here and there also. Yeah. Oh yeah. Sorry. Ollie, I just imagine you saying all of that on a date. On a date? Yeah. Like the girl sitting yeah. across from you and she's like, "So, what are you into?" And then you just you just say that whole thing that you just said. Yeah. 
Uh, that's why I'm single. That's too bad. <laughs> Groovy. All right. So today we chatted about the new album, Equinox, which is coming out in 2022. Right now, there's a couple of singles that have been released. That Fateful Night and Seasonal Warfare reimagined. The band's website is emmetropiaband.com. And we'll have to have you guys back on the show when the album uh, release is more eminent. I mean, it is eminent, but you know what I mean? Like when we know when it's going to get released and we've got more, uh, I guess, to chat about at that time. Uh do you have an idea when are we looking at like spring, summer, autumn? What season? Huh? What? what? <laughs> no, uh, it's uh, early next year. Uh, so I, I guess you could say st- uh, p- winter or spring, somewhere on the line. You guys could. Te- technically, we're not allowed to uh, disclose the release date yet. Yeah. Uh, no. But uh, you, you will know, know soon. Mm-hmm. That would be. It'd be seasonal warfare. You guys would be a never-ending fight over when it would, which season it would release in. Yeah, oh, yeah. exactly. Sure. Mm-hmm. All right. Is Emmetropia a Swedish smorgasbord of metal? Yeah. It is a Swedish smorgasbord of metal. Very cool. Yeah, I'd say, uh, I'd say so. Cool. All right, guys. Thank you so much for coming on to the Rock Metal Podcast today. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thank you.